Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for um, coming to my presentation. This is actually the second time that I'm presenting my research at the CECS Virtual Seminar Series. So I have uh, tried to both give you an introduction to my research and also include some of the more uh, recent uh, advancements in my laboratory. The title of my talk is Integrated Circuits and Systems for Terahertz Signal Processing. First, uh, allow me to introduce myself a little uh, bit with this slide. My name is Madi Asafzadeh. I am an assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering. Uh, I joined in January 2019, and uh, I'm a PI of uh, the UCF Terrace Integrated Circuits Laboratory. Um, um, a little about my education and training. Before joining UCF, I did a postdoc at the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, it was a very uh, brief period, just for six months. And uh, I got my PhD from Rice University in Houston, Texas, and my bachelor's from Sharif University in uh, Tehran, Iran. My research uh, is on the analysis, design, and testing of integrated circuits and uh, on-chip antenna systems. And these systems uh, typically operate in the millimeter wave and terahertz spectrum for applications in communications, sensing, and computing. And about my teaching, I have taught three undergraduate courses, linear circuits one and two. I've also had the opportunity to teach uh, signal analysis and communications. I'm also teaching a new graduate course, uh, AAA 5445, and uh, it's called Terahertz Integrated Systems. It's, it's a new graduate course offered for the first time this semester. In this course, we focus on electronic photonic circuits and devices for signal processing, uh, specifically uh, in the terahertz spectrum. And the goal of this course is, uh, is to train future scientists and engineers um, to push the performance of high frequency technologies. Now I'd like to give you an introduction to the terahertz spectrum. What is referred to as terahertz radiation is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum between high frequency microwaves and, and low frequency infrared. So uh, it is broadly defined as frequencies between 0 0.1 and 10 terahertz, corresponding to free space wavelength of 30 microns to three millimeters. Terahertz is a non-ionizing radiation with photon energies ranging from uh, 0.4 to 40 milli electron volts. And uh, this radiation penetrates through non-metallic, non-polar mediums. So many packaging materials or anything that is not a metal or is not a, 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 a basically a polar, uh, does not have polar molecules. Terahertz has a unique light matter interactions. So as terahertz waves um, penetrate through material and interact with molecules, they, they basically interact with the molecular transitions that are in the form of a rotation, vibration, or intermolecular motion. So these are given us um, fingerprints that we can trace um, these finger fingerprints from, from the interactions of uh, terahertz and matter to, to perform material sensing. Terrace waves, due to their small wavelength, they also exhibit quasi-optical properties. Um, so we know that, for example, in, in optics, uh, we have Abbey's diffraction limit, which determines the spot size of, um, um, of a, um, the focused radiation from a lens, and that is in the order of a wavelength. For the terahertz range, that spot size is in the order of 300 microns. And the diffraction limit is it's submillimeter, and it uh, allows us to use uh, quasi optics that are uh, similar in nature to uh, optical devices. Now, let's take a cl closer look at the applications of broadband terahertz radiation. 
Uh, in particular, we want to look at the applications that require the processing of uh, broadband terahertz signals. One of the main applications is in high-speed wireless links. So when we have, uh, when we can capitalize on a broad spectrum, um, we know that according to the Shannon's theorem of uh, channel capacity, uh, a higher bandwidth would provide a higher channel capacity or data rate of communication. And at terrace frequencies, just by oc uh, occupying or uh, utilizing a small fractional bandwidth, we can achieve very high data rates. And uh, if we can perform uh, signal processing with broadband signals, we can enable uh, multi-beam applications and uh, multi-beam communications. In the domain of sensing, we can perform a spectroscopic sensing and trace the um, signatures of terrorist matter interactions. For example, in this uh, sample figure, we have the absorption spectrum of, um, we have the atmospheric absorption spectrum in the terahertz range. And as you can see, compared to the lower frequencies, which are uh, millimeter wave frequencies, we have more complex interactions between terahertz waves and molecules. We can also use broadband terahertz signal processes for high resolution 3D imaging radar. By increasing the bandwidth of these systems, and uh, as well as center frequency, we can generate narrower beams and um, we can basically uh, detect small uh, obstacles with smaller cross sections from, from a long um, distance. And one of the emerging applications of terahertz is analog computations. So, um, and this is in particular uh, requires broadband signal processing. If we can efficiently generate broadband signals, uh, a pair of broadband signals, for example, from um, by performing interferometry or, or a spectral inter, uh, interference of these two uh, waves would uh, give us uh, an opportunity to do ultra high speed multiply accumulate computations. And all of these applications require not only just uh, power, terahertz power generation, but they also require waveform processing. So more complex operations, such as the generation and sampling of broadband um, signals. Uh, we also need filters to uh, modify signals. We have um, linear filters that are simpler and also nonlinear filters that would require uh, the use of um, active devices. And we can also, for the purpose of uh, terror signal processing, we can design subsystems to uh, uh, to perform wavefront modulation. We can have interferometric arrays to uh, uh, perform time reversal, correlation, and convolution operations. With all these interesting applications, it is uh, imperative to study the performance limits of conventional terrorist technologies and investigate novel solutions to overcome these limitations. So let's take a look at the current state of terrorist technologies. For example, in this uh, top right figure, uh, you can see that um, a, a very um, typical um, modern day uh, terahertz system is based on femtosecond lasers. So here we have a commercial system from, from uh, the company Advantis. Um, this system has a laser module, which houses the femtosecond laser and the delay lines. And the laser's radiation is fiber, fiber coupled to photoconductive antennas that convert a femtosecond pulse to uh, a terahertz pulse. But these systems, because they are based on, uh, they require a femtosecond laser, they, they're usually bulky and expensive. Uh, they have a limited pulse repetition rate to below 100 megahertz. And uh, the delay line that is used to perform the subsampling scheme is, is usually mechanical, which adds to the size of these systems. And uh, typically they have limited waveform and beam reconfigurability. Efforts have been uh, pursued in the past to, to generate arbitrary waveforms and perform um, um, signal processing by using optical pulse shapers. So basically grading structures uh, and uh, optical masks to, to filter the spectrum 
and perform linear filtering and um, generate, um, perform waveform shaping and generate arbitrary waveforms. But as you can see, this, uh, these schemes are, are not in an integrated platform and, and usually add to the size of the setup. So what we are pursuing is an on-chip terrorist solution to overcome these uh, limitations. We are envisioning uh, an on-chip system which does not require from the second lasers or optomechanical components. It can be uh, fabricated uh, with a high yield and uh, low cost. And these circuits can be interfaced with digital circuits. So we can co-integrate them with digital circuits on the same chip. And um, these systems can also have a broadband modulation and signal processing capabilities. So um, these are basically the goals that we are pursuing. And here we can see uh, one of the chips that I have uh, developed and it's been recently published. Um, it's a pulse radiator, a 1.9 picosecond pulse radiator in silicon. And we can make a, a comparison between the sizes of these systems. Um, definitely we need to consider the performance in terms of power and um, pulse width, but um, the chips that we are, um, the, basically the integrated circuits that we are pursuing will be much smaller in dimensions. Now I'd like to uh, talk to you about the three thrusts of my research in the first uh, few slides. Um, the first uh, research project that I'd like to talk to you about is broadband signal generation. So um, the objectives that we are pursuing in this thrust is we want to generate a broadband uh, spectrum in an integrated circuit platform. We would like to keep the phase noise low um, estimated in band jitter of below 300 femtosecond to, um, to generate very clean signals. And we also want to perform waveform shaping and waveform modulation. Um, another objective that we are pursuing is we're looking at novel digital to analog converter architectures for uh, an efficient conversion of memory bits to terahertz. So we are thinking that in terms of signal processing, we need to convert a large number of memory bits into a terrorist signal. So this is a, a compression that would require an efficient digital to analog conversion. The approaches that we are using, my PhD was, uh, during my PhD, I worked on pulse radiators. So uh, I worked on pulse radiating arrays and tried to optimize their performance using um, digital to impulse uh, radiation architecture. Um, however, many of the applications that we are looking at today, they not only require a broadband spectrum, they also require uh, arbitrary waveforms and essentially a more complex capitalization of this spectrum, uh, rather than just uniformly activating uh, a broadband spectrum. Uh, that's why I'm currently focused on pulse-driven nonlinear oscillators. So the idea is that since we have ultra-short pulses, with picosecond pulse width, we can, um, we can basically congregate these pulse sources in an active interferometer to, um, to create a pulse-driven nonlinear oscillator that can generate complex waveforms. So interferometry, and um, in better terms, active interferometry is, is a method that we are using for um, arbitrary waveform generation. For example, taking a look at this uh, circuit architecture, we have an active resonator, just like an oscillator, but it has um, tuned regeneration gain. We have control over pulse injection, and uh, it has triggered draining diodes to control the um, waveform, the temporal profile of the waveform. Uh, the outcomes that we have achieved with these circuits so far are um, we are capable of achieving a 200 gigahertz effective bandwidth with a peak effective isotropic radiated power EIRP of around 80 milliwatt. So we are still far from the performance of uh, femtosecond laser based systems, but um, for many applications, these uh, values could be useful. And the applications that uh, the signal generators 
can be used in, and I'm going to show you a few of them, are broadband spectroscopy, and particularly adaptive spectroscopy, meaning that we can uh, generate adaptive spectra matching the absorption spectra of materials to uh, increase the uh, overall sensitivity. And uh, these signal generators can be used in high-speed wireless links and in dynamic waveform applications and um, uh, emerging applications such as multiply accumulate computations in, in the analog domain, but also leveraging a terahertz scale bandwidth. Here you can see some of the, in the lower right figures, you can see some of the past and more recent chips that I have worked on. So this is a chip from my PhD period. It's a pulse radiating array in 90 nanometers CG by CMOS. So here we have eight elements on a single chip array and the radiation is coupled uh, through uh, the back of the chip and focused by a silicon lens. And recently in my group, we, uh, we designed and fabricated a pulse-driven oscillator in 65 nanometer CMOS. So the pulse radiators are used as subsystems um, in, in this pulse-driven oscillator. And, and we have shown that we can generate um, complex waveforms. Mahdi, please wrap up in the next uh, one minute or so. Sorry. The second uh, thrust of my research is broadband signal analysis. Um, sorry that I'm, uh, I, I think I spent a lot of time on, on the previous slides. Um, we are just like um, signal generation, we are using interferometry um, in, in a dual way to uh, perform signal detection. So we're looking at sampling bandwidth above 200 gigahertz with capabilities such as direction of arrival detection. Here you can see uh, two of uh, my uh, recent work, uh, our recent work in, in my laboratory. So uh, we first designed a PCB-based cross-correlation interferometer to perform interferometry and from, from the spatial profile uh, that the interferometer provides, we could um, uh, basically perform a spectrometry and, and uh, extract the spectrum of the signal. And we also have an on-chip version of this interferometer. So, uh, the radiation is uh, coupled to the two antennas and the standing wave that uh, is um, created between um, the two antennas would give us the spatial information, would basically give us the spectrum of the signal. And my third thrust uh, uh, of research is broadband terahertz measurement systems. So since we desperately need uh, high performance measurement systems and which are usually not commercially available or very expensive uh, due to band-to-band -band me uh, measurement schemes. We are looking at hybrid electronic photonic solutions so that we can synchronize femtosecond lasers to measure the radiation of electronic chips as well as um, characterizing our detectors. Now, since we are out of uh, almost running out of time, I just wanted to show you some of the application results and, and, and the possible um, uh, future collaborative uh, opportunities that uh, I, I'd like to uh, pursue. So uh, we have used these chips in terms of spectral imaging in a transmission imaging result using off-axis parabolic mirrors, focused the radiation on the sample. And here the chip has been used as a radiator. And you can see uh, the, the images, the 2D images, that have been uh, acquired at different frequencies. So it's a hyperspectral scheme. We have used it in gas sensing. Um, the, the same source that was used for imaging has been used for gas sensing. And we have performed, uh, for example, the uh, sensing uh, ammonia by uh, tracing its absorption line at 572 gigahertz. And also the water uh, absorption line at 753 gigahertz. Um, some of the uh, newer work that I'm focusing on is millimeter weld Doppler vibrometry. So uh, we are working on a cavity enhanced vibrometry scheme, uh, meaning by using a cavity backed slot antenna, increasing the quality factor of the antenna, we can uh, detect micron scale uh, displacements 
of material which can be used for uh, civil and mechanical uh, uh, structures. And Terra's channel characterization is the last application that um, I worked on during my postdoc years, uh, during my postdoc year. So um, in this uh, uh, measurement, we, we basically used our chip for uh, characterization of a long path wireless channel up to distances of 110 meters. And uh, the opportunities that I'm pursuing currently are, I, I submitted a career proposal this year, and uh, I'm also pursuing uh, uh, opportunities at DARPA and MTO office. Uh, uh, they have the microsystems exploration and the artificial intelligence exploration programs, which can uh, take advantage of um, terror signal processors. In the near term, I'm focused on, uh, uh, I'd like to focus on spectral sensors for material analysis. And I think that there can be very good collaboration uh, opportunities, uh, as well as my current ongoing opportunities. And in the long term, uh, I'd like to use these um, Terra subsystems as part of high-speed wireless transceivers, um, as well as for analog computations, uh, leveraging the uh, Terra scale bandwidth. And finally, uh, I'd like to thank uh, UCF faculty members that uh, have collaborated with me on uh, proposals, as well as uh, ongoing projects. And I also want to thank my students, uh, current and former students, and the members of my laboratory. Thank you and my apologies for running over time.